basically, myself, I, I fail everything in school. Uh, so I have no uh, chance to go to polytechnic or university because I was very talkative in class. And in those days, when you are talkative in class, then uh, the teacher asks you to stand outside. And uh, when you stand outside, you can learn nothing. And so uh, I became a very outstanding student. <laughs> and I, I failed everything. So I, I could not go to further after O level. So I, actually, I went to ITE. And uh, I learned hotel and catering, but I didn't do that. So eventually, I, I became a salesman because I'm very talkative. And I was a very good salesman. So uh, not having a degree was very good for me because then I can start business earlier. Otherwise, I had to spend four years uh, studying. So business is quite easy, so much easier than studying. So I make some money, and every uh, year I start another business. So I started 16 businesses, and uh, including like the Australian International School in Lorong Chuan. So I built that school from 32 students to 3,000 and 3,500 students. Then we sold it to a British group called Nita. And eventually, at 40, I retire. So why do I want to retire at 40 and not make some more money? Because when you uh, make money, it's because you need it. And when you don't need it, you should not make some more money. <laughs> because really, on the last day of your life, what you want to do is you don't want, on the last day of your life, just before you go off, you like lying on the bed and say, somebody please show me my bank balance account. Wow, I have so much money, then I die. <laughs> so I don't think that's a, like a good ending scene because those money that is left over is useless. Therefore, don't earn useless things. So the, then at 40, I thought, oh no, I'm going to die at 80. So I just budget like by 80 years old, I should be either dead or quite useless. So I calculate that. Um, that means a life is 29,200 days, and I have 14,600 days left. So every day is very, very precious. So I start to find what is it that I should do. So of course, I don't have status or authority, and I want to change the world. So I started Restroom Association because uh, Prime Minister Go Chok Tong said we should measure our graciousness according to cleanliness of public toilet. So I thought, this one nobody will do, so I go and do. And uh, we call ourselves uh, RA. RA means restricted artistic, and then a little bit like uh, not, I mean, not, not exactly uh, 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 correct, la, like dirty. La, right? So, so uh, it, it, it went very well in Singapore. Then later on, I realized that the world has got a lot of these uh, uh, people don't have toilets. So this picture I take in Orissa, I see um, every morning before sunrise, all the people are sitting along the road. And, and after sunset again, uh, so twice a day, they, they go to the toilet. And then the girls are over the other side. So I took this picture like in the friend's car, and flash, and then quickly. You know? <laughs> so uh, just to let you know what's happened is that after that, the shit um, the flies will come and spread the disease and kill a lot of children, get diarrhea. And also, when the rain comes, it goes in the river and pollute all the river. The water cannot be drank. Right? So the World Toilet Organization idea is to facilitate the whole world on how to turn out good toilet culture for environment, for clean water, for healthy uh, people, for tourism, for productivity. And, and dignity and all that. So I think everything is related to the toilet because no matter what you think, it's actually related to the toilet. Whether it is uh, uh, science or uh, this uh, business or NGO or financing. Right? So how do you break a taboo? So when we break a taboo, we use uh, humor and make it very, very funny. So I do this kind of sacrificial photograph, you know, wrap myself with a uh, toilet paper, and, and then it went to National Geographic Channel, and they made a whole documentary about it, and uh, funded by National Geographic Channel, and then they promote uh, our work. So actually, whatever is taboo is actually news. You just have to make it um, funny, make it entertaining. And in the social sector, in all the UN, very interesting. Nobody's funny, OK? 
Everybody is very, very serious. They, they, call, uh, they cannot call sanitation, uh, sanitation, so they call it a water agenda. So I said, if you call it water, nobody will know it's sanitation, right? He says, if I don't call it water, I cannot raise funds. So those people were more trying to satisfy the funder than to solve the problem. And so using humor, the media became very, very excited. So every year we have about 3 billion media outreach. And uh, like every week we have about two interviews without any solicitation. So the media continuously cover us for about 18 years now and continue to be very, very strong. So the first World Toilet Summit, I talked to uh, the Director General of NEA, which is uh, the gentleman with no hair. He's uh, Mr. Daniel Wang. He's already passed away, but he uh, was a very, very good uh, support in the beginning. And he, at first, he don't believe. Uh, he think I'm a joke, right? But then, as I start to talk to him, he kind of, hey, this guy is really serious. So he persuaded uh, Minister Lim Sui Se at that time was a Minister of Environment to open the World Toilet Summit. And then, from there, we invite 15 countries. And without any money, I created a first World Toilet Summit. And all the um, media coverage was very large. And after that, I no need to do it anymore. I just give people hosting rights, and then they host it. So I'm like Olympic authority, right? So I get these people to host it. So each year it costs about $300,000 US and, and they do it. So the next year was uh, mayor of Suwon City and then we went to Shanghai, we went to Belfast. And in this picture somewhere on the staircase is Dr. Amy Ko. Right? <laughs> she, she, she went there and she was like very amazed. Hey, how did you get uh, four, five hundred and more to come and do this? I said, yeah, last year was uh, Africa, it's all black one. So every year it changed, you know? so, so this is the kind of uh, leverage power that you can do from storytelling. You can create the media, then the politician, then the funding. And everything, let other people do. Don't do yourself, because if you do yourself, you can do very little. But if you get other people to do, you can do a lot, right? So after this, of course, uh, the Lord Mayor became Lord of the Rings. Right? So <laughs> we, we also went to Moscow. And uh, Russian, we don't know how to talk to them, but somehow we managed to host our meeting in their state parliament house in the state Duma and also go to the um, space center to see the cosmonauts toilets. So we keep on doing different kind of activity. During this year, we have the military coup of Taksin and uh, we thought it was going to be canceled, but it continued. And then we have a World Toilet Forum in, in in Thailand as well. And in by 2007, I still don't have any employee. I was a one-man show. And we have the president, uh, Abdul Kalam of India, open with six ministers and the crown prince of Holland. So actually, this kind of change the world work uh, can be done with uh, no resource, just by telling stories. And the leverage is uh, very, very powerful. Right? Sometimes I'm also a bit amazed uh, how come this is happening. Uh, but I also didn't plan anything. So it looks like very structured, very scientific, but actually everything was like by luck. So I just uh, keep on going. And then uh, we went to South Africa. Then we go to um, World Toilet Summit in Hainan. That was the year when um, George Yeo lost his uh, election. And immediately I said, uh, then you become our VIP. He said, why? Because you know, former minister is treated like minister and yet don't have the bodyguards and all that. No need to call Zhong Yang to bring a protocol. So actually, it's very, very welcome by the, by the, by the Hainan uh, party secretary and all that. And when he go there, he know everybody, right? Because he's a foreign affairs minister. So after he, he went there, he was very impressed and he says, Wow, I didn't know that you can do so much, so what can I do for you? So I said, then you help me make World Toilet Day, World Toilet uh, Organization Founding Day, 19th of November, the UN Day. So he called up MFA, and uh, after I'll tell you what happened, right? It was a very, very good uh, support from that year. So when I was at 2013, I was um, always proposing ideas to the government, and the government was always saying no, 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 right? So I think their job is like work eight hours, just say no to people, and then collect salary. So I, hey, what's going on, no? Why are they like that, right? So, 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 so I say, uh, instead of being very angry with them, why don't I go and 
finally get a degree la, after I never get a degree. So I went to uh, Lee Kuan Yew School and I applied and I said, I want to study master degree. He said, do you have bachelor degree? I said, do I have never go to university before? So, but, but I got a very good track record. I'm a mature student. So somehow I convinced them. So they got me to become a, a, a student and I studied too long because normally they are part-time is two years, but I studied four years because I kept on traveling. So after I graduate, they closed the part-time course. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they said, Botan, Titan. So, so eventually, uh, uh, but the next morning, uh, they asked me to be an adjunct uh, associate professor. So, so from the Botache, become professor. It's not bad. So like this morning, I also teach in NUS and then the University of North Carolina. So today is the third talk and then tonight I got to go and receive an award. So this is a, when I was 52. So when I 52 study, until 56 I graduate. So I was like one of the oldest graduates. So when I go to graduate, I, I, I do a new, you know, you wear those hats, there's a square, not very nice. Huh? So I went to the Wayang uh, rental and buy the Zhuang Yuan one, I, it's nicer. So I graduate with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and the gown looked the same, you know. <laughs> so in 2008, uh, they also, uh, for some reason, I don't know, Time Magazine say I'm the uh, hero of the environment. And so this type of work actually um, support my work internationally very, very well. So eventually I became a, a short fellow of the World Economic Forum. So I am a member of the World Economic Forum free of charge. So normally people go and become member one year, I think they have to pay like $150,000. But for me, it's a FOC. Lah. So World Economic Forum is like the highest level meeting. So I get to do that. Then President Clinton start to come and support and do fundraising with us. So of course, fundraising with President Clinton is quite simple. Lah. You take picture of President Clinton, you go and do your own fundraising. And then <laughs> if, if you fundraise, you must report back that how much did you raise. Lah. So, but it was very helpful. So, it, we, create, we create a lot of this uh, uh, credibility. And uh, one man show, uh, no money, uh, but can do a lot of things. Uh. So now, now, right now, we have five employees, and uh, we are the world body. You see? So actually, it's quite uh, interesting. So President uh, Naden, she, he went to, uh, went to South Africa. And then he went to South Africa, and he was visiting the jail of Nelson Mandela. Then, he met some of South African, they say, oh, you're from Singapore, do you know Jack Sim? And they start talking about toilet. So he says, wow, they know more than me. So he come back, he says, you better explain to me, otherwise uh, people know I don't know. So I went to, <laughs> I went to tell him everything what we do. <laughs> and then Matt Damon came to support us. So he made a video, uh, Matt Damon strike, I won't go to the toilet unless this problem is solved. So, he also introduced World Toilet Day to all his uh, fans. Then we have Salman Khan. This is the number one uh, highest paid Indian Bollywood star. And he did fundraising for us. So we raised uh, impromptu 140,000 US dollars uh, just by taking three buttons off his shirt. So I think like, hey, if he take off his pants, I got one million dollars. But he don't agree, la, so cannot. So, uh, Eventually, you know, George Yeo called to MFA and said, hey, you guys got to listen to this Jack Sim. He's quite, quite important work he's doing. So MFA said, no, la, toilet cannot. La. We cannot go to the UN and say we want to support toilet. He said, no, no, serious, you must listen. So give him half an hour. If you don't, list, if, if you don't like, you say you don't like. So, so MFA said, okay. So I went to talk to MFA, it became a one and a half hour meeting, and then MFA said, wow, so important work, we have to support. So eventually we went to the UN, and I gave a speech, and then we lobby all this, every, um, every of the uh, countries, until we got 193 country unanimous adoption that our founding day, 19 November, become the UN day. So UN World Toilet Day. So can clap. <laughs> So this is also the, the first time uh, Singapore um, tabled a, a own resolution. Last time they do a lot of resolution together with several other countries. This one, we table ourselves and our own embassies fight 
and very seldom UN have unanimous vote on that. This one also one of the few. So after this, it becomes like I think, oh, if I die tomorrow, it's already fulfilled, very good, uh -huh. done a good job already. But I still continue. So, uh, so then that year, Prime Minister Modi decided that toilet is so important. He promised everybody, if I get to become Prime Minister, everybody get a toilet. So now he's building 110 million toilets. So this is the biggest toilet building campaign in the history of mankind. So this kind of power legitimization uh, help politicians win election. No? <laughs> so it's a very, very important thing. No? I think Amy Ko keep on winning election because he support me, you see. <laughs> maybe, la, maybe. One of the reasons. <laughs> so uh, in Andhra Pradesh, in Andhra Pradesh, we have uh, this state, uh, which Singapore is building the new capital for them, Amravati. So they appointed me as the co-convener uh, together with the convener, the uh, speaker of legislature. So the state, uh, one of the very big state in India. So I become the same rank as the speaker of legislature. It's not so bad, uh, huh? <laughs> no, no salary, uh, volunteer. So in China, China, of course, go to China must change China clothing, right? So. <laughs> In China, uh, President Xi Jinping now his favorite project is toilet. <laughs> because India do, I also cannot, don't do, right? So, so uh, India Prime Minister favorite is toilet, and now President Xi is uh, doing toilet revolution, Keming, you know. So I quickly changed into Keming, Keming Jin, uh, and then we are now helping him on the tourism toilet as well as rural toilet. So this is a big change. And recently, he just got into an unlimited uh, term. Uh, so I think we can work with him for quite long. Uh. <laughs> so here's, uh, we are building the rainbow toilet, Chai Hong Xiao Che. So we go to China, rural area is a, a Gan Che, Gan Che is a dry toilet, very dirty. So we turn it into flush toilet. So the uh, program is uh, growing, growing very fast now. So, 2016, Coldplay. You all know Coldplay? Coldplay is one of the biggest uh, band in America. And Jay-Z is the most expensive or, or most profitable musician in America or in the world. Yeah? So these two, they went to Mumbai and play for World Toilet Day. So, really, really big, 80,000 80,000 free ticket, 80,000. So, so in Singapore, when Coldplay come here, it's $178 sold out in half an hour, and then black market, $278. So in our case, 80,000 free tickets. So every time I see every year something big, something new happen around the world for us, then I wonder, hey, how come Singapore don't do anything? Ah? Hint, hint, right? <laughs> so, um, this is also very funny. The Prime Minister of Samoa. Samoa, do you know where Samoa? Samoa is a small little island somewhere in the Pacific Island uh, next to New Zealand. And the Prime Minister of Samoa asked me to become a village chief in Samoa. <laughs> So I said, I don't know where Samoa, how come I didn't do anything for you? How come you, you make me village chief? He said, because uh, you are the chief of toilet, right? I said, yes. Do you know this village is the only village in the world that is called toilet? So you are the chief of toilet village? Uh. So I said, okay, uh, in this case, I come. So when I go there, they make me a chieftain with a title, uh, the high court certificate title called Tui Falibao. That means... Chief of Toilet Village. <laughs> so, apparently, if you have such a title, it's like getting a dato ship or something like that. Lah. So, when you go there, very, very highly respected. No? So, everybody in the morning, 5 a.m., um, this uh, before sunrise, we have a dawn ceremony. All these people are all very big. Lah. And then I'm the skinniest one. So, I'm also like brotherhood. We drank kava juice together. And then... Uh, I become one of them. So uh, this is 
all the funny things that happen when you keep going. So in two years ago, I went, because I don't know anything about technology, right? So now I know about public policy, I know about business, I don't know about technology. So I apply for the highest technology university in the world called the Singularity University. So this university is in NASA, inside Mountain View in Silicon Valley, and they teach the cutting edge technology. And when I go there, my classmates, you see all my classmates all very young, right? Everybody is so young, but I'm 59 year old, and I went to study three months and live together inside campus and day and night together with these people. It's really, really fun. You know, I asked my wife, three months, I'm not going to see you. She said, very good. <laughs> so, so <laughs> in this case, uh, I, I, I had a very nice time. I learned a lot. Now I'm a technology-orientated uh, person, right? So I start. So when I was there, I start to think, hey, maybe I should do startup. All these people are doing startup, right? So what about? I'm, am I too old? No, I'm never too old. I'm actually feeling very young all the time. So I go and do startup. So the first I, I do BOP, base of pyramid. There are four billion poor people in the world, and there are three billion middle class and rich. And since there are four billion poor, why don't we turn it into a marketplace, just like how Singapore turned from third world to first world, and how China copied us and turned third world to first world and got 700 million people out of poverty in the last 30 years. So let's do a World Trade Center for the poor. So I created this BOP hub, Base of Pyramid Hub, and uh, our vision is to get everybody to work together like a Swiss watch. So everyone, government, uh, UN body, uh, donor, NGO, university, um, development bank, everybody work together, companies. And if this is synchronized, the amount of wastages is going to go away because every year there's about $150 billion of uh, donation fund and not much is happening. So we want to disrupt that and change everything into business model. So I created the BOP World Convention and uh, um, Mr. Taman uh, came to open it with all the most leader of the of the uh, development world. So Sir Fatsli Abed, Paul Polak, and, and Unilever, and all these people. And then the second time, uh, Mr. Go Chok Tong came to support. So all these are uh, very thankful because when we start something, it's completely blank, new idea, and they believe. They believe. So whatever I start, they believe, and then they legitimize, and then with their status, then we go out there. It's much easier work for us. So right now, I borrow uh, $8 million from the bank, and I'm building this uh, World Trade Center for the poor. And I want to copy all the good ideas, turn it into business solution, and then do startup. And I think we can do veteran startup. So the older people who used to be uh, some manager or some directors in uh, companies or multinational or small medium enterprise actually has a lot of business idea. So the veteran should be better start up because more experienced than the young people, right? 25 year old, what do they know, right? So if we take a young one and an old one put together, and the only trick is how to get the young one to respect the old one and how to have the old one to also understand the young one. I, I did that because I'm an old one and I uh, uh, get a young one and it works, right? So I, I start to think these are all workable and along the way I get some UN award again and then I started the fortified rice. So I saw the construction worker in Singapore, the nutrition is very poor, they eat rice and curry, not much nutrition, so I went to get fortified rice vitamin from uh, Holland and then put it into the... Um, rice and sell it to the construction worker. So I raised $1.1 million. I got a 25-year-old boy to run it, and uh, he became the general manager, and I raised the fund for this. So these are uh, example. And then now, because the school educational system is actually no good anymore for the future, because you are reading and then repeating, so the robot also can read and repeat better than you. So your memory test, whatever you can do, the robot can do better than you. So the educational system is actually obsolete. So what we need is people who can, people who can think, uh, curious, compassion, commitment, courage, 
all the things that robots cannot do. So we're starting this school uh, around now and we have uh, formed a team of it and the funding is roughly coming already. So we also start to partner with a uh, Japanese called Taizo San. He's the brother of um, SoftBank and uh, Science Center. So we are starting to do good. But we are doing it outside the school system because the Ministry of Education is very difficult to convince. So after we are able to be successful, then we don't talk to the director. We ask the minister to come and say, oh, this one very good. Then the director can Okay. So this is the, the way to, to play the game. Huh? If you don't know, you ask me, I have some experience. So recently, I launched a kindergarten with uh, 20, 20 uh, kindergarten, and this program is to empower the resilience of the three-year-old kids so that they have, don't grow up with prejudice, prejudice on skin color, on race, on religion, on wealth, on handicapped people, on LGBT, on male, female, all the prejudice removed so that we're just all people and we're equal and let's respect each other. So this will create harmonious society, but we start at three years old now, and they say, why then you got to wait very long? No, you have to start. Because if you start at five years old, six years old, very hard. So at three years old, after they learn it, their defense system is very, very good. So finally, I want to start a nation builder platform because I think that inside the government, there's a lot of young bureaucrats that want to innovate. And then the older one, many, they block them. So these people cannot innovate. So what about if the public and the young bureaucrats can innovate together and then we kind of navigate the whole system. So the public also very angry with the, with the bureaucrat. Why every time you say no, right? So they say no because they have a lot of rules, right? So we can use these uh, nation builders to bypass the blue. So we talked to uh, two veterans. One is uh, Mr. Lim Siong Guan, and the other one is Ms. Lim Su Hoon. And they listened to this idea. They said exactly what is needed now. So we got internal support from the bureaucrat side, and then we will face the outside. And everybody will score us, or whatever. No problem. We just want to solve the problem. Uh, and then we realized that those people on the social media that talk a lot one usually not very serious. So we want to find the one that are very serious and we found quite a few and uh, I think there are many things we can do. For example, with the C3A, we can actually do a veteran startup, right? So these are things we actually can do specifically. So um, last, uh, Tony Tan, we got this uh, philanthropy award and tonight, the Queen is giving me an award. So uh, at uh, 6 o'clock, so... <laughs> so of course we do our work not because we want to win an award. If you do the work for a award, that means your brain is cooked early. So you have to do your work because there is something wrong that needs to be addressed. And of course, government, they try their best to do whatever, but there's always some places you need private sector to do so. It's not that government didn't do. Government do a lot of things, but there are always something else. So these are the type of work we do. And uh, free time, I also do some public art. I put uh, these uh, guards on uh, Katong Park. And uh, sometimes illegal also. The other day, I draw a giraffe on the lamppost, and then the government paint it back. Then I say, hey, why you don't? Uh, very hard to argue. Lah. So now I'm thinking how to create uh, with the art council a committee to approve this type of new arts. So the, the most important thing is everything is going on, but the family must be strong. So I am very, very thankful. I have a very nice wife. And this, I think it will be the, considered the biggest success rather than all the other things. So how to find time to do so many things? You have time when you have energy. The more energy you have, the more time you have. The less energy you have, the less time. So if it's very boring, no energy. It's very exciting, got energy, right? So if you have fun and purpose, then you have energy, then you have a lot of time. Then if you can use other people's time, you got even more time, right? <laughs> so you see, I spend so much time with you, my life become very short. So I only have 6,900 days left to live, which is less than 1,000 weeks, and you don't see me anymore. So. Uh, you also will die, you know? You will die. And you are sure to die, right? Guarantee one, right? All your ancestors are all dead already, right? So what's the most important thing to know is while you are alive. While you are alive, how are you going to use this time? 
And I can tell you, the most beautiful thing to do is to do service because every time you do service, your consciousness opens up and you become very happy. Every time you think for yourself, your consciousness narrow and you become very miserable. So don't bother about yourself anymore. Try to help people. And you don't believe, you try. Once you try, you get addicted and you keep on doing service to other people. Okay, thank you very much.